You're listening to the Fitness Matters Podcast with Paula B, and this is episode number 41. Hello, 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 my friends. Welcome back to my closet. <laughs> where I am recording the Fitness Matters podcast. Every week we talk about the fitness matters that matter to you and and my closet doesn't matter to you, but today's topic absolutely does. You guys, today we're talking about facing your fears in what is now this completely unintentional what are we on? At least three part series. And I was thinking about it today when I was putting this topic together. I have so much more to say about feelings. I'm, I don't think I'm going to be super linear about this. This really is not an intended series. This Today's topic has actually been on my list of topics for, I'm gonna say almost a year. And this morning when I sat down and I was kind of flipping through my list of topics and I was like, you know what? I have so much to say about this one. And ironically, I have so much to say about this one that I almost talked myself into not doing it because because I have my own fears about about topics that I have so much to say about that I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to get it all out. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to do the topic justice. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to explain it well or thoroughly. I'm afraid that I'll have to make another podcast on this topic if I don't do it well this time. <laughs> it's kind of funny, right? And the thing that's really funny is that I hear, I hear you guys, I guess this isn't funny, but I hear, I hear you guys say things that you are afraid of really frequently. I mean, really, really frequently. And I appreciate, let me start here, that I appreciate so much that, that you and I have the kind of relationship where you can share your fears with me. I do not take that for granted. I love that you feel connected to me in a way that you can tell me when you're afraid of stuff. Being afraid of things, it's a little bit vulnerable, right? And so when you tell me things or express, you know, in the world, not necessarily to me personally, but on the internet, you tell me things in either the Killer Beehive, my private Facebook group, or in comments on YouTube, or, or sometimes when you email me or direct message me, which I don't answer direct messages anymore, but I do still read your emails. But, but you tell me things like, I'm afraid to step on the scale, or I'm afraid to eat that many calories when you have just recently calculated how many calories you should be eating to eat the right number of calories in order for you to lose weight. I frequently hear that one about, I'm afraid to eat that many calories. I'm afraid to sign up for a 5K. I'm afraid that if I eat something sweet or salty or whatever, that I won't stop. I'm afraid if I stop exercising for a day that I'll never go back. These are really interesting fears. And I know that, I mean, if, if any of these or all of these apply to you, that maybe you don't have maybe you don't have the fascination with it that I do. I am capable of being a little bit removed here because these are not the things that I'm afraid of. I am afraid of having to redo this podcast, <laughs> which probably sounds silly to you, but it feels like a very real fear to me. And so let's let's talk about let's talk about fear. What is fear? I know you know, but but getting analytical and kind of digging down into the roots of it, for me, this is always, always, always the way I like to tackle something. I love to know why. I love it. I find it so fascinating. And if it's not how you think or how you do things, I really appreciate you come along for the ride with me every time that I have to dig deep and parse down and get to the bottom of why we do things. Because I, I personally feel that that is the first step in feeling better. Knowing why I feel something in the first place, like at all, knowing its biological roots really specifically, always makes me feel better. And then, and then everything else that I do is kind of gravy. It's kind of, it's just the practical, the brass tacks, the here's the next steps. But for me, understanding why is it's the root of everything about feeling better. So let's understand fear. Let's understand why we feel it and why we use that word for things that don't entirely apply. Because you guys, fear is a primal emotion. It is one of, and here, you guys, I'm so proud of this. I actually have a page full of notes 
and I did like a couple minutes of Google research today because I really wanted to make sure that I I stated some things really specifically and and I also wanted to make sure that I was at least kind of in the ballpark with being correct. You know, that whole like trying to tell you the right thing thing. Anyways, fear is one of what scientists think is four primal emotions. Originally, we thought that there was six and there are, there's some debate about this, but I honestly, I tend to fall into the camp of the four emotions because I really truly believe that everything that we feel can be distilled down to, to some very basic primal human emotions. And they are happiness, sadness, fear, and anger. And the thing that's really funny that I'm just now realizing is that we talked about this quite some time ago. And I was talking about the, the different kinds of primal emotions. And those I'm pretty sure are the ones that I came up with because they're the ones that make the most sense biologically. We need to feel pleasure, happiness. We need to feel that. It's how we survive. It's why eating feels good. It's why sex feels good. It's because our brains seek pleasure and avoid pain. So the other, the other primal emotions, I don't know if you noticed this, I was thinking about this. Of the four primal emotions, only one of them is positive. Only one of them is happy. Sadness, fear, and anger, those are all what I would consider negative emotions. So isn't that interesting that we spend approximately 75% of our lives avoiding negativity, avoiding this pain, and trying to seek pleasure, the one, the one emotion that we have that feels positive. Kind of fascinating when you think about that, but that's, I'm digressing, so let's get back to fear. Fear is a primal emotion, and it serves a purpose. I mean, it absolutely serves a purpose. Fear is how we survived. It is, it is one of our most important. In fact, I'm gonna argue that it might even be more important than happiness or pleasure, because yes, happiness, pleasure, I mean, well, no, that's not entirely true. Happiness and pleasure is, is how we eat and how we procreate, so therefore, that is how we have survived all these years. But fear? Fear of predators, fear of death, fear of the unknown, fear of being cast out of our tribe. Those are some really, really important fears that kept us alive for millions of years. If we did not fear eating something poisonous and just ate whatever willy-nilly, we wouldn't be here. If we did not fear being shunned from the group and we were all individuals, we never could have banded together and built society and survived. I mean, let's face it, as far as the animal kingdom, we're not the fastest or the strongest. We just banded together in a way that really helped us survive against animals and nature and wilderness and all kinds of, all kinds of things that I really can't even imagine. Fear keeps you alive. Or rather, it has. Fear has kept us as human beings alive. Now, nowadays, you guys, there's really not very many things to truly fear anymore. There are still some. I mean, there are there are still threats to our existence, but generally speaking, fear Fear is very watered down, and it's why we don't always use the word fear when, when we're talking about it. And this is what I'm going to tell you about how the four primal emotions, everything else kind of comes from them, stems from them in different ways. That we have nuances of all of our emotions. I mean, we have... I'm going to say dozens, but probably upwards of hundreds of words to describe very, very slightly differing shades of emotions, but they all come back to the same primal four. And here's what's even more fascinating than that. When we dig into what is an emotion, what is a feeling, it is a physical response. We actually just talked about this really recently in the episode, I believe, entitled Feelings, where we talked about how your feelings are actually just a physical, physiological response to your thoughts. But I want you to think about how 
these feelings feel <laughs> in your body. Like the physical sensations, especially the four primal emotions. This is going to make it very clear the point that I'm getting to. When you think of fear, like real fear, not just I'm afraid to step on the scale, but like I am afraid that I am going to die in this situation right now. The physiological response that you have is that you get hyper alert. Your thoughts start, they're they're both clear and sort of racing at the same time. You're, you're looking for an out. You're trying to be hyper alert and figure out what to do next. You get really fast, shallow breathing. You're trying to get in as much oxygen as you can so that your brain can continue to work and so that you could probably run away if you had to. Your heart starts pounding. Your hands kind of feel clammy. You get a little bit sweaty. You have that physiological adrenaline feeling from fear. But think about this. What happens when you feel really, really happy? Like the best thing in the world has happened. Picture yourself winning the lottery or, or something, something huge and really thrilling. Oh, you get kind of hyper alert. Your brain starts thinking very clearly and very quickly. You get fast, shallow breaths. Your heart starts pounding. You sweat a little bit. Huh. What happens when something devastatingly sad happens? You get hyper alert. Your brain starts thinking both fast and weirdly clearly. You get fast, shallow breathing. Your heart starts pounding and you start to sweat. What happens when you feel angry. Something really, really, really makes you mad. I know you've already heard this list three times. You're going to hear it again. Your brain starts thinking, not, maybe not super clearly, but very fast and very alert. You get fast, shallow breathing. Your heart starts pounding. You start to sweat. You guys, the physiological response to all of our emotions are very, very similar. There are some nuances. I'm not going to argue that they're exactly the same. That's not, that's not where I'm going with this. But they're very similar. And it's why sometimes we almost can't tell the difference. It's why some people, and I do not include myself in this, but why some people actually love to feel afraid. Like they love scary movies. I do not count myself in that camp at all. But it's why people go on roller coasters. I mean, it's scary but it's thrilling. There are so many similarities between the physiological responses to all of our emotions. It's fascinating when you realize that there's only a very thin line between fear and happiness or fear and anger or fear and sadness or any, any combination thereof. But here's the important thing to notice about this. These physiological responses, they can feel very dramatic. You know, when your heart pounds and your breathing gets really shallow, you, you can interpret that in a lot of different ways. You can interpret it as being terrifying or you can interpret it as being thrilling, but it's always it's always just contained in your body. And relatively speaking, it tends to be pretty short-lived, especially the, especially the big part of it. We have talked about this before and I have not, I still have not corroborated this, so I'm just going to keep saying it. Generally speaking, feelings last about 90 seconds. <laughs> in and of themselves. Sometimes when they last longer, it's because we continue to have the same thoughts because you guys, I know you know this, your thoughts, cause your feelings. Just in case that is a brand new concept for you, I'm going to refer you to the podcast of How to Change. It's where we really go into this. I'm, I'm actually coming at this as though, as though you know that that is why we feel our feelings is because your thoughts cause your feelings. But understanding that your feelings are simply physical sensations is going to be a really, really, really important part of our topic today about facing your fears. Because when we feel the feelings, we have, we have sort of an immediate perception of what those feelings mean that sometimes we don't question. That we, we assume, oh, well, if I feel this way, 
then it must be terrifying and therefore I should avoid being terrified. I mean, again, this is, this is our most basic psychological response. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain. Feeling, feeling something that we interpret as terrifying or fearful. I'm going to say fearful. <laughs> terrifying sounds really big. I don't think that signing up for a 5k feels terrifying. But sometimes it does. Or sometimes it's not even necessarily the signing up, but it's like the day before. I mean, this is something that I have dealt with numerous times. We have we have talked about my my race nerves and my race fears and how they have affected my performance greatly because of my interpretation of these physical responses that I was having. So you guys, when you feel when you feel afraid of doing something, I have, I have some practical advice for you. Understanding the biological roots of fear, for me, again, is the first step. Understanding that when you are afraid of something, that that is a really, really natural response. Like, truly one of the most natural things that we do. This is why it's primal. It's something that we were born with many, many, many millennia ago that, that is an essential part of who we are as human beings. You're never going to not feel fear. And I personally think that knowing that helps me move through it, helps me understand that it is an essential part of who I am and therefore fighting against it isn't going to help me. Trying to say, oh, I'm not afraid of things. It's not really helpful. It's not something that's going to get you very far. You are going to feel fear. Fear is part of who you are. So, so eliminating that possibility of I'm not going to feel it kind of helps you relax into it. This is a feeling that you are going to have. But here's what we can do for ourselves when we are afraid of something that we actually that we actually want. You know, when you say I'm afraid to sign up for a 5k, but but my goal is to sign up for a 5k and do a 5k, you do need to get past the fear. You do need to move through your fear. When you say something like, I'm afraid to step on the scale, that one's actually really easy to just simply avoid. I will tell you, though, that moving through the fear, understanding your fear, and, and dealing with it, having it be part of your experience, can be very helpful, especially if it's your goal to lose weight. If it's your goal to lose weight, you need to know what you weigh. And being afraid to step on the scale or being afraid to eat the right amount of calories or being afraid that if you don't exercise for one day that you won't come back to it. Rather than avoiding, I mean, which again is our natural <laughs> instinct, we avoid these bad feelings and try to seek pleasure. Rather than simply giving in to that, move through the fear so that it doesn't feel like something you need to avoid, so that it doesn't feel like pain. And here's how. You are going to ask yourself a very simple question, and you're going to keep asking yourself this question until you come to a final conclusion about what you're actually afraid of. Here's the question. And then what? And I want you to actually ponder this. When you are afraid of something, let's, let's come back to my, my fear that I'm not going to explain this well enough. And then what? Well, then I would have to explain it again. Then I would have to make another podcast. And then what? Well, then I would have to make that podcast and explain how I didn't explain very well and I would probably feel kind of embarrassed. Okay. And then what? Well then I would be embarrassed. <laughs> right? <laughs> you guys, if you listened last week to the Stop Thinking Positively podcast, then I will tell you, I have some experience with feeling embarrassment. Feeling embarrassment? Not really the end of the world. Feeling embarrassment has its roots in the four different primal feelings, and it feels a lot like my heart pounding, my thoughts racing, my breathing coming quickly, my hands getting a little bit clammy, feeling kind of sweaty. It feels 
like a lot of our other feelings. What happens if you sign up for a 5K? Okay, I'm afraid of that. But, and then what? Well, then I've signed up for it, so I have to do it. Okay, and then what? Well, what if I get there and everybody laughs at me? And then what? Well, then people will have laughed at me and I will feel bad about myself. And then what? Well, if I feel bad about myself, then I will <laughs> be embarrassed and I will never sign up for another 5K and then my life will be ruined. Okay, and then what? Well, if my life is ruined, then everything that will ever has been good in my life will desert me and leave me. My, my husband will leave. My kids will run away. I, my dog will live in the backyard. Everything will be terrible. Okay, and then what? Well, then I'll be really sad. Oh, you know what sadness feels like? Kind of feels like you've got a lot of thoughts in your head. Kind of feels like your heart pounding. Kind of feels like your hands are a little clammy and your breathing is a little fast and shallow. Huh. You've felt that before, haven't you? You could feel it again. Here's what I'm telling you, my friends. Walk yourself through the worst case scenario. Walk yourself all the way to the end of the road by continuing to ask yourself, and then what? Here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. No matter how many times you ask that question, at the end of the road is only a feeling. That's it. That's all that's waiting for you down there. A feeling. And it's probably a negative feeling. I mean, as we have discussed, apparently 75% of our feelings are negative, <laughs> or at least our primal feelings. We've got lots of nuances to happy. I think, I think overall, I mean, this is, this is a topic for another day, but I think overall we probably feel good about half the time and bad about half the time. I think there are as many nuances to feeling happy as there are to the other negative emotions. I, this is not scientific. I'm totally, totally just pulling this out of thin air. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about my own human experience. I think that I am happy about half of the time. I think that I feel, I feel embarrassed about half the time too, or fearful or, or whatever. I mean, and really, and really when it comes down to it, apparently my heart is always pounding. My breathing is always shallow. I'm always hyper alert. I'm always a little bit sweaty. That one I can definitely attest to. I am always a little bit sweaty. You guys, the only thing at the end of your fear is a feeling. There are, there are lots of them. I mean, as we discussed, there are, there are four primal ones, but there are lots and lots of nuances. But no matter what the nuance is, you have felt it before you can feel it again and you will survive it. You have survived all of your feelings so far, all of them. I mean, we have 60,000 thoughts a day. Your thoughts cause your feelings. How many feelings are you having in a day? I mean, you're probably not noticing all 60,000 of them the same way that we're not noticing all 60,000 thoughts, but you are having, I'm gonna say hundreds of feelings in a day and you don't notice very many of them. You, you probably notice the bigger ones when they come up like, oh, I'm super frustrated or, oh, wow, that was very exciting. You notice the bigger ones, but you have survived all of them. You will continue to survive all of your feelings until you don't. I mean, and the thing is, at the end, the thing that's going to get you, it's not a feeling. <laughs> it's, it's not. I know that, I know that this was a really like intellectual conversation. Your feelings feel very real because they are physical sensations. But understanding that physical sensations are just that they're sensations. They're not, they're not actual threats. They're not actually problematic. They are incredibly natural. They are supposed to be here. They have helped you survive. They will continue to help you survive, but also you can override them. You can think through your fears. When you think 
all the way through your fears and you realize that the only thing waiting for you at the end of that dark and scary road is just another feeling, you might as well go ahead and get through the fear right now because that might actually end up being the worst of it. Truly, when you go down the worst case scenario, the likelihood of a lot of that stuff happening, I mean, obviously the, the example I gave you was kind of ridiculous, but the likelihood of the absolute worst, worst, worst thing at the end of the road actually happening, it's pretty slim. And knowing that you are going to have to go through this heart pounding, clammy hands, th racing thoughts, shallow breaths, feeling, no matter what, I mean, pick your poison. Pick, pick the one in front of you or pick the one that, that's going to happen down the road. Either way, you're going to need to feel this feeling. So you might as well feel it now, right? And especially if feeling it now gets you where you want to go. What if, because we're going to do the end then what, with the best case scenario too? This question, this question works for everything. What if at the end of the road, you got the racing thoughts, the clammy hands, the pounding heart, and the shallow breath because you got your biggest dream come true? The best case scenario happened. And then what? My friend, imagine that too. Imagine that feeling waiting for you. And then you get to perceive the heart pounding, the hyper alert, the shallow breaths, the clammy hands. You get to perceive all of this as excitement happiness, being thrilled or ecstatic. It's always waiting for you. It's always waiting for you at the end. So you get to choose how you perceive it. You guys, I'm curious. I'm curious. Did I explain this well enough or am I going to have to do another podcast? <laughs> and then what? And then, I mean, I have to do another podcast anyways. This is always waiting for me. So, so I might as well have just gotten this done now, right? Right. Go away yourself. Go try eating the right number of calories. Go sign up for that 5K. You are capable of feeling your feelings. I promise you are. You've had, you've had more practice than you realize. You have plenty of time to continue practicing and getting, what, better at feeling these things. You can do this. You can do anything. I hope this one was helpful for you today. I always do. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.